Hey, what's up anglers? I'm Will Dowd Martin, editor with Bass Angler Magazine. I hope you're all healthy, practicing safe and responsible social distancing, hopefully out on the water. You know, one of the things I've been throwing a lot of lately is a swim jig. Uh, they, they've just been really keen on a swim jig. And I think one of the reasons for that is uh, everyone seems to be throwing chatterbaits these days. The spinnerbait's been making a comeback for the past few years. Um, but chatterbaits seem to be a lot of the, the go-to baits for, for folks, especially on uh, lakes and reservoirs that have a lot of vegetation. So I still throw the chatterbait, but um, I've been throwing the swim jig a lot and I feel like they're keying in on this a little bit more because it's more subtle. There's a lot of uh, vibration with the chatterbait, with the swim jig being a more compact profile. Really the only action you're gonna get, unless you're working it yourself, is the action that has that you have on the trailer. In this case, when the claws get going on this, I think it's enough. I don't really have to work the bait back. A lot of times you'll see anglers sort of hop in the bait, a swim jig back to the boat, in this case, a kayak. Uh, but I don't think it's necessary for me for the most part. Um, I like throwing the swim jig because it's compact. Um, it comes through cover extremely well. That's one of the downsides to a spinner bait or a chatter bait, for instance, when you're throwing it around grass or tulies or lily pads, what have you. A lot of times it gets hung up a lot more easily than a swim jig does. So fishing the delta, for instance, with a lot of grass and tulies, the more compact profile of a swim jig is very effective. I throw it on a uh, seven foot two inch heavy action Okuma EVX rod. It's a heavy enough rod that I can move fish away from cover when I do get bit, but it's also light enough that I can still get a nice long cast with a lighter bait like a, a swim jig, three eighths ounce, quarter ounce sometimes if I wanna keep it above the grass. Um, half ounce is the most I'll throw on it. Uh, throw it on a seven to one gear ratio Okuma Helios reel, high speed reel. Again, move fish away from cover. That's the importance of having a, a high speed reel. But I think the key to this setup is the braid. I throw it on 50 pound soft steel covert braid. And the reason for that is especially when fishing around vegetation, you gotta be able to get your bait back and move fish away from that vegetation when you do get bit. The no stretch feature of braid is really important. Anyone who's ever been hung up on a Thule before knows how difficult it can be sometimes to get your bait back. So braid really helps when, uh, when coming through heavy vegetation. I think uh, the covert feature of the soft steel braid also uh, really camouflages the braid well. So I don't really think uh, the fish are that line shy when I'm throwing braid. Um, I usually keep my bait uh, selections uh, simple as far as colors go. I throw black and blue a lot, green pumpkin, some sort of shad color and a bluegill color. Um, and it just kind of depends on water clarity and time of year. Uh, it will depend on, on what color swim jig I, I decide to throw. Um, so you know, next time you're out on the water, you're fishing uh, a, a lake or river that's got a lot of vegetation, try swim jig. If they stop biting the chatterbait or the spinnerbait, try swim jig. I think you'll be surprised at how many bites you get.